Uh, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Verzi Effect podcast show. My name is Paul Verzi, and you guys listening to episode 609. I did a solo last week. I am back in the New York studio this week. I have another guest. I have another great guest. Uh, this man's making his second appearance on the show. As a matter of fact, last time he was here, we were like, we got to do this again. Uh, he was here. He had one child, and now he's back a second time with a second child. He has a crowd work special dropping this Monday. Jeremiah Watkins is back on TVE. What's up, buddy? What's up, brother? Thanks uh, for having me back. Yeah, no, dude. Anytime you come to New York, dude, we got a we. You know, we ran from Jason Voorhees in the woods together. I know. We'll have that forever. <laughs> <laughs> we will always have. Not many people can say that. Not many people can say that they were at a wedding running from the most iconic killers in history. Yeah. And we were on the same team. And that was awesome. Uh, I told my wife about it and she's like, what is your life sometimes? I'm like, I don't know. It's, it's, it, you it really know? is funny that like the shit comics do. Like I remember one time just seeing a comic in a hallway in the in like the grand lobby of a hotel at mm -hmm. a festival, and he goes, "Oh, dude, I gotta run, dude. I'm going to do this naked thing." And I was just like, "What? Like only our job? Like yeah. a lawyer would never be like, <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm going to shit on this other lawyer yeah, yeah. later. We got dude, it, it pays a hundred bucks. It's <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do it. I gotta do it. That's the best. Yeah, dude, the shit. They're throwing that, in gas money. Dude, I gotta do it. An up and coming comic. If you find out what they did, it's almost abuse. But oh, they dude. do it to themselves. Yeah, no, we're signing up for it. Yeah, you're we're like, like dude, that's dude, not... it's a five-hour drive, dude. The guy's giving me fifty-five bucks, and you know what I love? Yeah, dude, you get two drink tickets. Yeah, that's the best. You get two drink tickets, and the guy's gonna give you dinner. And a couple comics here, right? Who who books that? <laughs> <laughs> who, who, dude, you said fifty-five. You said fifty-five. That's hilarious. That's way better. <laughs> two drink tickets, dude. That's fucking nuts, that's, dude. dude. Are you royalty there? <laughs> dude, the wings are good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bone-in you... wings. That's crazy, <laughs> dude. It's only Vermont. That's like four hours. It's not even. No, it really is like the shit that we do. And then you get to a certain point and you're like, but I guess you have to, don't you? It's kind of like. Yeah. The, I mean, that's I mean, that's the definition of paying your dues is like is like after you get to a certain point, like if you get to a certain area as a headliner or whatever, like people know that you went through the trenches to get there and yeah. that you like kind of deserve to be there. There are very few. I would say, and this is, again, this is just my opinion. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, oh, fucking Verzi's family man up in the woods doesn't want to be. But it's not that. It's, it's There's certain things that I just don't want to do because I just, when I got in this business, my thing was I want to get better at stand-up, mm -hmm. maybe act, but, like, stand-up comedy is my first love, and I kind of want to do it the traditional way. But I will say this. Uh, your show, your stand-up on the spot show, and I did it once a long long time ago i don't know robbie did robbie slowick run it yeah he i uh, had him host it for me out here in new york so i ago. did it yeah. when robbie did it i did it at new york comedy club mm -hmm. and i remember going like wow that was more fun that was more fun i did one at the stand that went like okay and i did one at new york comedy club that went really well and what i liked about it is it's the one kind of i guess themed show mm -hmm. that like it's almost a training exercise like, it's almost like a comedy training exercise where they're like, all right, you're on stage. An audience member is going to yell out, like, running a marathon. And now I got to make running a marathon kind of funny. Yeah. And that's kind of like almost writing on stage. And that's why I like it. So, I mean, I definitely, like, if the timing ever works out, I would love to do it. But oh, it's one of those shows where I'm like, that's actually kind of fucking cool, man. Dude, you, you find out real quick you're kind of backed into a corner. Like, you're like, oh, I got to come up with something funny right here, right now on the spot. And uh, it's really cool to see how each comic approaches it. Because everybody has, like, some people, you know, do similar devices that, you know, we all have, like, we all have our tool belt of, like, okay, this is yeah. my funny. This is where I pull my funny from, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's cool to see one-liner comics do it versus storytellers versus act out comics yeah. like it's cool to see them start with that one word or that one suggestion and then it become a, like a full-fledged thing yeah and i'm sure some comics have gotten like jokes that have earned their special dude i've gotten jokes on my special i think bert got something that yeah. went on his special multiple people there's some people that end up uh what i do after the sets uh, like to make it as like comfortable for the comic as possible i say hey i don't put out anything without your permission like you get to see the set sure. you get to see the set if you want anything edited out you let me know we will take care of that um and sometimes people will like something that they did so much they're like actually 
can I not release that one part? Can I hold on to that? Yeah. Because I want to maybe put that in a special or I want to hone it a little bit more before it's out there. For me, as a comedy fan and somebody who, who puts out a lot of stuff, I think the audience likes to see the growth of the joke along the way, but I'm always like, hey, whatever you want to do. Like, it's your, you know, it's your spot to do with whatever you want. Have you ever had some, like, crazy moments where, like, you didn't, like, somebody said something either, like, I don't know, like about a tragedy and there was like a moment. Like, has there ever been like a moment moment on stage or it's all been silly? Um, There was, there's been sometimes where like there's like a touching thing that happens. Because uh, yeah, jogs. I shouldn't say tragic. I mean, yeah, maybe yeah. more like a, like a, like a, almost like a real, like something that was started from darkness, but then, or like, I'm sure you've seen some wild things, right? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen some people, uh, you know obviously make the tragedies funny sure, uh, they're of course. good at that but i've seen some some moments where i'm like oh wow like i didn't expect it to go in that direction it, because they start like talking from their heart because it's in the moment and yes. it's unfiltered where you're like oh wow that's kind of cool like they're telling old family stories or something where i'm like dude this is cool that's the beauty of it it's like one little thing can trigger that just goes deep into the chest of, of you know, yeah. and all of a sudden you're taking it out and people are like, oh, I thought that that was going to be. But then it took this beautiful kind of thing and still was funny. Sure. I had a moment when I was doing your show where somebody goes, I go, you know, there was like time for them to yell out something and they go cereal. So I was like, oh, dude, growing up, I love Fruity Pebbles. They go, no, dude, the document, like the the, the murder podcast. Yeah, yeah. There was a murder podcast called oh. Serial. <laughs> right, right, like, right. Do you right. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like this big, Mike, did you ever hear about that? Okay, so I, I guess. I like that the audience member corrected you, too. I'm like, why can't I interpret it how I, you know? <laughs> yeah, they were just like Serial. And at the time, it was a crime podcast mm -hmm. of a real, apparently it was a re, it was a, a true crime podcast, and they called it Serial. It was and big. I just And I just, yeah, and I just went into, like, Fruity Pebbles, and, like, I just started to like, <laughs> and they were like, no, and I didn't know what it was, but that was kind of cool. Yeah. Like, it was kind of cool that I'm going, what? They're like, no, it's the crime thing. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know about that. Right, And then right, right. make that funny. You know what I mean? That's, that's why. Why, and again, it's nothing against like I'm not trying to be like a dick against roast battle or a, or a dick to like that, that that thing is. But for me, like yours is like a straight up like can a comedian a comedian's got to try to make it funny. And I'm, I'm sure you've probably had really great comedians not make things funny Absolutely. on the spot because that's it's that's what's fascinating about it. Yes, it's, it's the most pure raw form of stand up. It's it's honestly what probably like a foreigner would think stand-up comedy is like watching like like the, you know they see <laughs> right. they see the improv sign like uh, the, the different clubs are like oh they're just making it up right right like a lot of people think that where they think it's like a who's line yeah, where, like a family from belgium is in times square they're like <laughs> right. let's go watch what these people yeah. make fun of you, right now you yell and they mix so yeah sure i watched that yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right so let's talk about this now because last time you were here you had a baby yeah. Now you have another baby. Yeah. So what do we got? What are we doing? What's at home now? Like, what are you dealing with? <laughs> what's, that? what's going like, on at home? Yeah, what? <laughs> Jeremiah, what's going on? Because these kids keep coming. You're like, honey, listen, I'm going to New York. I'm doing some spots. I'm doing some pots. <laughs> got to get home. Sex. Then I got to get on the road. Right, and right. they're just multiplying the, the Watkins household. Dude, we did. Like, so I had a, I had, I was in Florida over the weekend, headlined some shows. And I was planning on flying back on Sunday. That's my reset day always with the family. Has like, to be. It has to be. Has to be. I don't do shows. I try to reset. That's how I know you're a good, like Sunday. Listen, if you're a family man and you work on Sunday, you're a piece of shit. Like, yeah. like, Sunday is, I'm telling you. Mike, now, unless when you have, have little good chicken wings, I'm not going. <laughs> if they're pay, not paying 50. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. but like seriously, if uh, that's the one thing that I learned coming up, somebody was like, hey man, you got, who? somebody just said, you got a family now. It might obviously was a comic with a family at the time, but they were just like, like Sundays, dude, you don't, you don't work Sundays, do you? And I realized I'm like, yeah, no. And then I just made the rule. I'm yeah. like, you know what? On Sunday, obviously if it's a crazy paying gig right. and it's like a charity or fundraiser, yeah, you go out and say, Hey, but like, if I it's always just say add the Thursday, take away the Sunday, please. If we have to do the five shows. Yeah, oh yeah. You know? it's a Sunday. I want to be home mm -hmm. with the family. We're going to eat dinner. We're going to talk about the week and be together. So that's great. So no, go ahead. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, but I had crazy flight delays. So it took away the Sunday. So I got in at like 8 30 PM and the uh, baby was already down. But my, my older son, he's almost three now he was up and he's just like, so ready to see me. It was, it was awesome. So I got to see him for an hour. I got to see my wife for like two or three hours. We had time to have sex. I had time to pack. And then I was back out on the road.
Wow. But we had time, you know, but that time was so valuable Yeah, that it was like the time to reconnect and like, we got to talk about our weeks and stuff. Like, and it was, I kept her up as long as I could. And I'm like, she's like, I have to go to sleep. I'm like, I know. All right. All right. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm at the point where like when me and my wife have two hours, we just like lay away from each other. Like our backs <laughs> are like, oh, dude, we got two hours. We turn our backs and we just get naps. You on a queen or king size bed? <laughs> yeah. we, we're in a queen now. We're going king though. Dude, you're, you're we're a king? In, we've been king like okay, since that's... we started dating. Like even when we had the tiniest, tiniest place, we're like, this is a priority. Because we're both tall people. We're like, we're like, this is a priority to get a king. Dude, you know what? I fucked up. I got a I had a, a sponsor for mattresses. Okay. But we had the queen frame. Oh, and so they you're go, like, but they the... go, we'll give you anything. I could have actually gone, you know what? Let's just get the king frame and the king. And instead, since we already had the frame, my yeah, wife goes, I'll oh, just get a new queen. And then we were in this beautiful hotel and a king, and she just looked like we fucked it's up. It's a man. game changer. Oh, it is. A king is like, to me, it's almost like it's another room. I'm, it's amazing. I don't even, you don't even feel the other person. Dude, so now we're doing it. We're gonna, we're just jumping into it. You get a, a cuddle for a bit, and then you get to go to your own side. It's you amazing. know, there's a king deluxe. There's like a California king. There's a king deluxe. There's there's something that's called, dude. At what point do they just call it a divorce? Where you're, just, <laughs> you're just like. Have, have you seen Shaq's bed? <laughs> no. Bro. Uh, what is it? It's like a, a giant circle. He's like, I can fit my whole family on there. <laughs> it's a giant, giant circle. It's huge. Is that it's right? It's a custom bed. So, I mean, he's so big, he needs, you know, he needs one anyway. So he made just this giant circle bed. They were They were in Times Square. Uh, Mike, you'll get a kick out of this because I know you're you're about to be a, a married man. They go like this. There's a uh, there's a couple in Times Square. Someone's doing like man on the street, and they were just like, uh, "What was the key to how long you've been married?" And I think they were like 44 years, 42 years, and they're like, "What's the key, man? What, what what's the key that you got key to to this success?" Yeah. And he goes, the, the husband goes, separate bedrooms. And dude, I hear that a lot. I mean, I don't think I could bring myself to that because I think at certain point, if I go back to being in high school while I'm married with a family, but they, I mean, people swear by it. They're like, we that. spend time, we watch movies, we'll even lay in bed. But once it's time for actual bed, just go to your spot there. You don't have to worry about anybody kicking. You don't have to worry about snoring. You do. And, and like, and then you're kind of like, oh man, I guess you don't get resentful at all that way. You know? I mean, dude, if somebody like slaps you or like just moves and then right. you're up now, yeah, it's like a, f you know, and my yeah. wife will get like, we, we're married enough where like me, I don't know how you and your wife are. Me and my wife have the relationship where we'll be like, dude, stop being a dick. Just shut up. Like, but not in a, like a, an abusive right, way. Right, right, right. Just like Paul, stop being a dick. I'm like, all right. You know? Okay. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we have uh, our old. Then I scream the C word and it gets weird. But... <laughs> yeah. Then it's like kind of strange. Then it's like, <laughs> I didn't mean that one. Me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a little bit of blood, you know, it's like... <laughs> No, our older son, he is at a place where, so he's almost three, but he start, he's starting to like, in the middle of the night, he sometimes will get out of his bed and we have to keep resetting him and stuff yeah. like that. So he'll come in and like, sometimes like three o'clock in the morning, we're like, y you can stay if you just stop moving. Yeah. yeah. Like you can't move. <laughs> yeah. Like just stay still. Um, is, do you think, is he trying to like be up or is it like a real... I don't know. I, I think that it's a mixture of like, dude, he's like, he's trying to potty train and all that yeah. stuff. I think it's all just like, honestly. Does he mind. say like, tell me a story, read me a book? No, before okay. bed, before bed, he'll okay, do that. Yeah, no, yeah. he'll sometimes come in at three in the morning. He's like, I want a snack. And we're like, dude, it's three in the morning. What are you? <laughs> I told my wife, I'm like, dude, I'm tempted to get like a box of Chewy Bars and just have it next to the bed. Just, like, just eat it. Just go back. <laughs> you just see empty wrappers everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's funny is Giannis Pappas is my neighbor. He lives six houses down. We, you know, he, he would visit me from Brooklyn and we're, I'm up in the country and he loves it. And he has the one daughter and then now he has a second daughter who's mm -hmm. young and I don't see him. Like he used to, Giannis used to legitimately walk in my door like Kramer in Seinfeld's apartment. Like dead serious, I would be, Stacy and the kids would be sleeping, I'd be downstairs watching a doc 10, 45, 11 at night and all of a sudden I would just hear, hey man, what's up? He'd walk in, he'd bring his dog, his dog and my dog are friends and me and him would sit and watch docs and he's just That's like, dude, so cool. he's like, dude, uh, we're just swamped. He's like one sleep in this dude. He sounded like he just got back from war. He's like, dude, she needs to play games always. And the other one is not sleeping. My wife is freaking out, dude. I'm sorry. I haven't seen you. And I'm like, all right, dude, just Yanni long days. Do, we get do, it. Do, we get do it. what yeah. you have to do. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but it does, it, there'll be a break. You, you now, know, are you that kind of dad 
that is more like Giannis that that you or you're like I can't or are you you keep it more to yourself and you figure it out because I've got friends that yeah. are both who are dads who are like they tell me when I see them I'm like how you doing they're like oh dude it's like you know like they tell me <laughs> <laughs> they, they they do that unloading like that breath or yeah. you have the other dads who keep it more close to the chest are like. You know, things are all right. You know? I was kind of probably a mix. Mm -hmm. I would probably be like, you know, uh, two is crazier than one. And my friends had told me that. Two's a big jump. My buddy, it really is. My buddy, uh, I always tell this story, so I don't want to sound like a broken record, but my buddy Kevin Martin in high school, he had kids before me. And he said, Paul, he goes, one is one and two is a million. And I laughed it off. He goes, no, 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 dude, look at me. He goes, one is one and two is a million. That's why when you hear like these families that like these kids that had like, yeah, I'm one of six. You're like, is your mom a, a fucking superhero? I can't fathom it. Could you imagine having five running around? That's something. We have two now. I can't imagine having a third or a fourth. I literally cannot comprehend it. Yeah. I saw. I got the vasectomy. But, so, oh, you did it. Yeah, I see, did. I could. I, yeah, they, yeah, she wants me to do it. I. Could. Oh, we talked about. It. Yeah, you did it. Uh, oh, yep. you did it recently, right? Uh, like in the last like six months. Pain. Or so. Yeah. Painful. I had a bad experience. You did. But I'm on. I think I'm on the extreme side. I don't think they numbed me enough. Oof. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Dude, that's a, how does that like how is that okay? Oh, it's sorry. It <laughs> <laughs> here's here's some ice. Oh, dude, yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah. My wife's like, "Why don't you want to?" and I'm just like, "Dude, cuz I just look at it like this and she'd be let's just say my wife kicks me out in like 6 months. She's just like, "Fuck you. This isn't working." And then I'm some fucking neuter dude walking around in his 40s. <laughs> look at it like that. Oh. Well, that don't make me, me feel good a neuter dude. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not saying you're, like, you. It sounds like a gift. Like, oh, she's going to leave know, you and no, I, you can just go out there single people, and not worry that's about That's what it. I'm saying. A lot of people A lot of people look at it like, yeah, I am a neutered dude that's right, going to go out. Right, right, right. That's, that's the thing. Like, they're like, yeah, dude, I'm going to go out. I can do whatever. I can go date. I can do one night stand, whatever, and I don't have to worry. But then you're like, I just feel like, uh, am I doing it for that? Like, I want to just do it. I don't know, man. I just like to still. What would you do? You would do it, Mike? Yeah, what are we talking about here? Yeah, I, I don't know. have to have any more kids than if I end up single. I'm just out there freewheeling. <laughs> like, I, I want to know what great. the number is, dude. I bet you that's a good question to ask, like in a poll. Like, how many dudes would like wanna, uh, like just just get it done and not have to worry? Or people like oh, I want to, you know, still that uh, you know. When I sometimes I'll, I'll like I have a bit where I'm talking about like about my experience with it, and I'll sometimes it'll get a, a a very visceral reaction from men and women and so i'll ask them like yo what's your what's your deal some guys are very very anti getting it and then other guys are like oh yeah, yeah i got mine like forever ago they don't care they don't care they don't care at all so like but it's pretty polarizing though and then some women are like it's interesting some women are like i would never make my man do that oh yeah yeah so a lot of different viewpoints half a million a year according to the internet get one Half a million? There's 50 million men that have it in America. Now let's talk about a vasectomy. Is it irreversible? Like, can you reverse it or no? You technically can, but they you sign a bunch of paperwork saying, hey, just if in you, case. because If they, you never can again. Because they cauterize your area down there. So like sometimes if they damage it too much, it's that that's when it becomes irreversible. Ah, uh, okay. You know what I mean? Because they're literally like, they're, you know. Right, so they can't guarantee. They can't once guarantee. it happens once, in, right. legally. Legally, they can't be like, "Hey, we can't reconstruct it. We might have. You might have got a weird doctor or something that didn't. That wasn't like gentle enough with the way that they closed it You're off." You're single, and like all of a sudden, like the, just a woman of your dreams is like, "I just need a donor." <laughs> You're like, "Fuck, dude. hold on a second. Let me call my doctor." <laughs> <laughs> Whoever your dream girl is. Right, right, just, rip right. it open. just rip it open. <laughs> You'll find something in there. I fucked up, dude. I was just trying, you know, no, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, like, I'm not one of those, like, no, fuck that. I just don't, like, yeah, for me, just like, no, but listen, I could definitely, like, you, I think there's a lot of dudes like you that were like, my buddy did it. The same buddy that said mm -hmm. one is one and two is many. He's like, oh, it's the best thing I've ever did. Yeah. You know, some people love it. It's a good peace of mind. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because then you don't have to worry about, she doesn't have to get anything done. Yeah. Right, like yeah, yeah. you know, tubes tied and all that shit. Um, now, can you like, can it happen where you get her pregnant still? There, like, is so that I like was to, that something? Go, you have to sign. They were well, like, maybe yeah, they didn't do to, it right. I have to go back. So you go back a couple months later to make sure that all the swimmers are gone, and then you basically, I think, every five to ten years, you get kind of like you can ask for like you can just literally like make a deposit and then go and be like, hey, is there anything? Is there any swimmers in there? And then they check. 
make sure you're good. But there, it, it can regrow. That's what's so crazy. There's one doing a backstroke. Just, <laughs> yeah. There's just one guy free. <laughs> just one Michael Phelps sperm that's just going at it, just ready. He's like, He's I like, will dude, get I in that no egg. got no competition. Yeah. This is incredible. Yeah. Did, you, did you freeze any sperm just in case? No, 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 okay. no, no. Just in my freezer. Well, that's, but, that's you know. uh, that. <laughs> well, but my it wasn't, own. It wasn't, our own. Well, yeah, yeah, our own. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking hilarious. It wasn't so, medically ordained or anything. With, I don't want you to have to go through any painful details but because are there i guess there's a last question i'll ask about it uh this is what's so great about a comedy podcast we just talk about it. Yeah. what what are there different ways of doing it like one of my buddies said it felt like yes. he got his balls flicked for 45 minutes another person said what was your like procedure without i'm mean, obviously you don't have to be uh, i don't want you to relive it but yeah yeah they, there's a couple ways to do it they there's one they do a laser process and then there is the uh the scalpel way Ooh, laser or scalp? And your choice? old school one. Uh, depending on the doctor, depending on your coverage and healthcare and all that stuff. I think the laser one's more expensive. That'd be funny if the guy comes in and he goes, listen, your coverage doesn't really cover laser. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're more of a scalpel guy. <laughs> Is this your wife's company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your wife's company does not cover laser, but don't worry. We'll go the old school way. I'm a vet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. So you did, the, you did the scalpel way? I did the scalpel. They call it a suture... Uh, like they basically, it's a scalp, a scalpelless suture that they basically like, they put in your sack and then it like spreads it open. So okay. there's technically no scalpel that like that went in. Oh, okay. It like separate. It's crazy. Like it separates the sack. It just separates it to make an, an entry. Where, yeah. Oh shit! And did it hurt? Yeah. It did hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's not supposed to hurt. They they're supposed to numb you not up enough where they're like they're like oh we'll have you out of here in ten minutes but I passed out did you yeah yeah dude fuck yeah that, dude yeah yeah I mean they numbed you they numbed me but I still felt it that was a problem see that's Ooh, no dude that's no, like that thanks. happened to me that happened to me at the dentist dude that's a problem is everybody has a different pain threshold and sometimes like like I hear that sometimes Irish people have more of a uh, uh, a thing with uh, with pain stuff where it doesn't work on them as well oh i i was i definitely and the doctor said he goes you have a very high like i had the high tolerance for pain and i was just sitting there and i was dealing with it and then finally he just goes are you okay do you feel that and i go i was like i'm okay but i feel it and he goes you shouldn't feel anything yeah, and he was yeah. digging into my gums dude and i felt the tooth shaking and i'm going dude and all of a sudden i started seeing stars and my eyes started tearing in pain and i'm kind of dealing with it and he goes you know what we'll give you another shot and i'm like yeah how about you fucking yeah. give me all the shots now right right you know but especially with something like that well <laughs> you, you, I, I mean to look yeah something uh, no, but yeah, like, yeah. especially something like that where you're he's going like hey are you feeling this you're like yeah i'm feeling my i'm feeling my nuts sacking my balls and a lot of pain yeah. when you're supposed to numb me dude well that was the thing is i'm like also because you've never done it before like a dentist appointment sometimes you're like ah maybe i shouldn't be feeling this i've never had this so i'm like i'm just like this is just the pain that goes along with it but everybody else i talked to you're like no you shouldn't have felt anything this you know what i'm gonna do when i get a, a root canal I'm gonna get the vasectomy at the same time. Do it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just Do kidding. it. She's like, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> just, ah. She's, I'm just like, they're just like, put him down, dude. Yeah, put yeah. a dart in his neck. Like, but I just, I want all the horrible, painful shit dude, done. Dude, get your colonoscopy. <laughs> Get a root canal, get a vasectomy, all, and, ah. get a pedicure, manicure. I'm getting yeah, it all done. Yeah, dude, that's hilarious. Just have a chair with the hole cut out. Underneath. Bro, my sister just had her tonsils removed, and she had her septum worked on for uh -huh. like breathing. And they were like, "While we're in there, we'll do the do the both." Wow. She goes, "That was the absolute worst decision she's ever made in her entire life." Oh, to do it her all. Her whole like head that. was just screwed for like wow. three straight weeks. Couldn't breathe, couldn't sleep. She was yeah. awful. No, that's they don't double up. I got, I got the. Flu shot and the booster in the same day. Also, the worst day of my worst week of my life. So I'm a single man now. When it comes to yeah, one one medical procedure at a time. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's it's they got to get it, dude. They got to like, they got to get it right for the big ones. The big ones you got to get right. And here's yeah. the thing: they protect themselves with the paperwork. That's what. That's the thing. They know. They know if, dude, if, if God forbid they fucking did something to your sack or if they if they hit somebody's nerve in the face and muscle goes dead forever, they, they're protected, dude. Of course. Like, you know, you could try to sue and do that, but it's it's scary shit. Uh, my mom, it was a weird uh, uh, thing where she had, um, 
what's it called uh, when you lift something too much and you get a uh, hernia? Hernia. She had a hernia on the right side of her body that she went in for. She woke up after surgery. She has an incision on the left side. Whoa. And they and they go. Uh, she goes. What do What did you guys do? She goes. It was on the right side. They go. Hmm. Oh my god. And and they're like, well. We actually, there was a hernia on the left side, so we'll just have to go in and get the other one. Like, wow. That, that's all they said. That's all they well, said. They're, yeah. like, they're like, we did repair a hernia that was forming on the other side, so they completely messed up. But because, like, maybe the beginning of a hernia they, was started, they, they covered their butts. Yeah, I knew there was a doctor that did surgery on the wrong knee, and he was actually a brilliant, he was actually a brilliant, like, apparently this brilliant ACL, MC, and I don't know if the paperwork, this guy cut into somebody's knee and had to stitch it back up because it was the wrong one, and that's a lawsuit. Like yeah, that's that's dude. where you're like that's where you're like all right dude I'm kind of gonna take some money here. I got called into jury duty for that exact same thing. Some Did guy you? had the left the wrong leg is sur surgeried on operated on. And they I were, think it's surgery. Surgery, I think, is the absolute is the right one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure surgery. Well, that's why they let me go. They yeah, were like, yeah. "Does this guy know words?" <laughs> but they're like, "Do you trust hospitals?" I was like, "Andy's no. super racist. It's so <laughs> weird. We gotta get him out of here." <laughs> Start screaming the n word, and they're yeah, like, yeah. "You could just said you don't like doctors." <laughs> yeah. Shit. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's like. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, they're human too, man. That's yeah, the thing. That's, it's like it's human error. Yeah, you know, uh, but that's also come on, dude. You fuck like that's got to be on your draw an you know, X hung, on the knee, dude. You're hung over, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, hung over. You, dude, you were out. You're like, oh, I got a knee tomorrow, but it's you know, it's walking the park, dude. It's just, <laughs> yeah, I got a knee tomorrow. He's like, hey, count me out. It was last round. Count me out. I got a knee, dude. That Applebee's party went crazy last night, dude. We stayed way too long, but it's a, it's an ACL. I will get it. No, man. Like I I uh, I don't get me wrong. I've been around amazing doctors that do the right thing, and you're like, oh, dude. Like, it's got great. I had a call. One thing I did, I did colonoscopy and endoscopy, mm. same time. Dude, great. Knocked it out, both. You know, how old were you? In when you and did out, that? dude. By the way, anybody listening to this, this is serious. I know th there's a comedy podcast turning medical funny, but dude, I'm not joking around. And actually, it was Giannis who taught. It was one of the greatest laughs I ever had in my life. I swear to God, it's in the top five laughs I ever had. Me and Giannis are at the Soho Cigar Lounge. And he said to me, we're talking, and he goes, you got to get your colonoscopy early. He goes, it used to be 50. He goes, doctors are saying now they're finding cancer early, and now they're actually went from 45 to 40. So now the, the old 50 is now 40. Mm -hmm. And he's just talking to me, and we're having a drink or two. And as sincere as anybody has ever said anything, he goes, dude, you know, have you had your asshole checked? And dude, he just, the way he pointed at me and said, have you had your asshole checked? And then I, we just start laughing, and then he said something else, and it gets contagious. And I'm laughing, and we're crying, and you know, you know what dude i fucking went to the doctor at 40 two polyps took out non-cancerous but there yeah and then went back at 45 went back now this year i'm 45 now went back and uh and the found a couple more and they were like oh one could have maybe turned whatever but you're good and they did it so like anybody listening to this dude if you're 39 years old or above go and get a colonoscopy mm -hmm. it is it dude i mean it's colon cancer kills people man yeah. it's it's a serious serious thing man it sucks but um we'll bring the show back up yeah yeah you know we're talking about her you know nuts getting numb and not working and right. then just cancer in the ass <laughs> So, <laughs> so uh, you got a crowd work special. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what do you do for work? <laughs> that's hilarious. Have you had a fucking have a second? Uh, is anybody in here? Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on uh, April first, dropping. Uh, it's called Not Another Crowd Work Special, and nice. uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's super fun. I filmed it at uh, Acme Comedy Club in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, that must have been awesome. It was it was great. My dad uh, was present. I brought him up on stage. He get he what? tells a joke in it. It's it's yeah. It's, that, wait, are you from there? No, you're not. No, he drove from Kansas City to Minneapolis for that show. You're from Kansas City. Uh huh. Are you a Chiefs fan? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. So you're psyched. I mean, yeah. I was at the Super Bowl. Were you? Yeah. Dude. Yeah, I was at the Super Bowl. Wow. I bet MGM put our podcast there. It was great. That's so cool. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, great. Congratulations on that. Thank you. that yeah, I mean, a, yeah, yeah. I mean. Yeah, it's uh my family is you know they they got to be in in there like like really absorbing it like being in in Kansas and Missouri like that whole yeah. you know just that whole area was just on fire they're just like obsessed. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, 
did so he drove to minnesota just to be there for your crowd work show yeah yeah he came uh to, to see uh, the shows that weekend it was pretty cool that's all and you got him on stage i got him on stage i didn't even tell him i was, uh, I was like i i knew that he was in the back but i was like i was like is he still here like i don't know because it was the late show and I, and then i brought him up and then uh that's awesome yeah it was a cool moment for sure that's you guys are close i take it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Dad, I would uh, imagine I just started crying. I was like, yeah. I wish my dad would come to my special. <laughs> did, he, did he ask you if you got your asshole checked? <laughs> <laughs> He's never been to no. He actually, actually, the only. <laughs> oh, you, are you dad when you crowd special? Oh, it's cool. You have a dad. Cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you start, you start you try to be supportive about it. Yeah. So you guys are like, your voice starts yeah. cracking. You guys are close. So how, <laughs> how close would you say you guys are? Like drive, drive a you know at least five hours close as you are your whole life. Growing up, he was like around. All right, all right. <laughs> Never abusive. How That's long, awesome. So how long has he been your dad, huh? <laughs> Wait, is it your stepdad? Or <laughs> you try to find like not yeah, yeah. blood. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to find the, like the dysfunction in it. He drinks. So your mom, drink? I want him to yeah. drink. So your mom found someone. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. He's recovering, right? He's recovering. <laughs> was he at all your functions? <laughs> dude, you want to laugh, though? As much as we're fucking around, dude, when you find out, like, everybody that has lack of a dad thing there mm -hmm. is a fucking, is an issue. Mm -hmm. Whether it's whether it's women that you've dated, when you find out about, they actually, they just did something where they were like, as much as mothers, nurturing mothers are important, they were just talking about, like, people without a dad that was literally like a dad just going, hey, like put the hand on your shoulder, great job, I'm proud of you. Like what that does for your psyche compared to a dad going like, you're not gonna be shit. Yeah. Dude, one of the craziest things, oh, go ahead. I, don't know, I was gonna say that there was an old Maury episode where they had like the <laughs> the, the drill sergeant taking kids to like, oh, oh I've seen that one. Clip. He goes, you want like, me to take you home and be your dad for it? He goes, yeah. Yeah, why? And then, he, because I don't have a dad. And then, and then, dude, that and then he starts, then this military guy starts crying. <laughs> yeah. He picks and him he up and him. takes him backstage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then fingers him. because I was going to say, then he molested too. him. Then, then he was his dad and molested Nickelodeon. him. Nickelodeon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the other thing. I, I'll get back to that. Remind me of the, remind me of the. I'll remind stroke. you of the that's military guy fingering a little boy. Yeah, yeah, no, remind me. Dude, that's great. I was saying this the other day in the green room at the dojo you know this nickelodeon thing i didn't see it i haven't so seen for it the, either for the people that are listening to the version in fact right now uh if you don't it's there's tough. a thing called there's i i didn't see it it's oh tough. you saw it i saw the whole thing yeah so there's a thing called quiet on the set apparently i've never seen a minute of it but it's about the guy the producer the people that are running all of these shows on nickelodeon for mm -hmm. these child stars and i said something the other day in the green room at, at the dojo and i thought about it i go isn't it kind of weird though that like an adult would be involved with children all the time. Like if you're, I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying if you're putting on a production for kids, you're a weirdo. But if your whole thing is like, if you're only and always around little kids and doing that, there is something that you got to go like, is that? Is that guy a little is, off? Is that like, a, yeah, like you're always around kids. You're always around child stars. You're always kind of like goofing around with like a 12 year old. To me, after a while, it's like, why is that? I don't know, man. I think like there's something to that. Is it? Is it yeah, that's pretty much the whole the whole documentary. And it's by the way, like it's not advertised. It's so much worse than you think. It's so much worse it's than you so think. So much worse than you think. Like the guy Dan Dan Schneider. Schneider yeah, yeah. After watching it, I'm like, the guy wasn't that bad compared to the other things that was happening. I, well, yeah, mean, I, I he almost he's the, the name, but there's other things yeah, that are going no, on they, there. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, well, so he he's not the worst thing. No, he's the tip of the iceberg, buddy. Look under the water. Because oh, it's, it's bad. Oh, I did yeah. not oh, like that. Yeah. It's that turn of bread. Look under the water. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Mike. <Yeah. laughs> I got sick of my stomach. Oh, just, my God. That's oh, just the tip of the iceberg, yeah. baby. Look under the panties of a... It, gets so, <laughs> it gets so much hotter. Yeah. Or worse. <laughs> what was it? Which is the right answer? <laughs> no, no dude. It's, it's despicable. Like, at, at the end of the third episode, I I genuinely, like, jumped out. Like, what? Like, at, as it was closing, I because it's it's so crazy. You see what uh, Tim Dillon was playing. Tim Dillon was Tim uh, Dillon's not in this documentary. Just as what everyone that? knows, he's not in this. No, documentary. no, no. He Tim Dillon on his podcast was talking, and he said they showed Dan Snyder, 
and like he like the this is how you know that that guy's a piece of shit for real and like even now the way he tried to deflect uh, and Tim showed the clip of it but he was like yeah you know I, look looking back you know I shouldn't have done a lot of those things but he goes the first movie we did for Nickelodeon was Keenan and Kel and I'm very proud that even back then I had the first two main cast members being black and it was just like oh dude so oh. you're so you're gonna okay yeah so you did that to you gave a massage to fucking Amanda Baines when she's eight or whatever I don't know if that's really no, what no, happened no, no, no. but what, no but what, I'm just saying but all of a sudden oh, yeah put Keenan oh you mean the guy who show it with the kids who show it was <laughs> yeah you Richard really creepy and like worked hard on kids and then was just very sexually deviant towards kids He's like dude, dude dude I'm not a racist <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Weird let's deflect. not get out of hand here <laughs> all right I the never cameraman's that. Mexican <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never touched a black kid <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, they're man. too fast everybody knows that <laughs> none of them would get in the pool with me all there's right there's mexicans all on this crew i mean because we'll never put them in front of the cat i mean never mind i mean <laughs> you get it right <laughs> yeah dude that's like i don't know though there is something about if your job every single day of your life is to be around little kids the inf there's uh, there to me that would be something where like if my if my daughter came home and she was like oh mr Riley was touched my shoulder. I'd be like, all right, dude, we're gonna. That's why teachers get summers off. You get a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have to like do an exit thing yeah. after every. So, how are you feeling about kids? Like, you good? You need, yeah. Let's go. All the to way out there, like, I don't know. So I'm gonna. You know, you know what? Let's go to Florida for a couple months. Yeah, what'd, yeah. You, what'd you do this summer? I just calm down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going to an all inclusive. Call adults that the, only. Call that a big reset. <laughs> Just took a breath, three months. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna cold showers. <laughs> we're gonna send you and your husband to an adult only yeah, for a couple yeah, months, yeah, just yeah. to you know leave the kids with. That. Uh, yeah, no, man, that's that's um that's a pedophile. I that's just a, a move that I think is it's a sick fucking horrible, you know. And listen, there's a reason why, and and, and this is not like. Talk about Corey Feldman well, just for the sake and these of, other kids. Like, there's a reason why these child stars that were in Hollywood, seriously, like... Just for the sake of legalities, it was never accused... Dan was never accused of being a pedophile. No, just so right. you don't get... I don't want you to get in trouble no, listen, with I said, saying that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I listen, I, I, I never saw it. Everything is hearsay, what you hear on this podcast. Yeah, I, but no, this I isn't the, This isn't the Verzi news effect. <laughs> no, but I... Did, yeah, like, it's just a Verzi, like, wrong news. Yeah. I'm just like... I'm like, what do you mean he's he raped just their life? He never did rape it. No, but he was in an interview. Fuck that guy, though, too, Mike, because he was in an interview and the, oh, he was the a guy, piece of shit the guy sure. goes the guy goes what he goes dan what was with the massages and he goes look that was wrong and it was really looking at it was really uncomfortable and wrong it's like you fucking like who does that it wasn't kids though just to be clear it wasn't kids giving him massages it was other it was it was like the make women makeup artists and like women on set would so he was very sexist but again it wasn't kids massaging him Oh just, no! Just so he clear. he would get massaged by the makeup artist. Yeah, he'd be like calling. He'd call the makeup artist, be like, "Hey, Janine, oh, he it's your awesome. turn. <laughs> your turn to <laughs> rub me down." Everything. But you couldn't say no. So like, you just got to sit there and rub this fucking creep. Oh, weird. You know, it's weird. That's... While he's like directing kids in a pool, it's just, it, all of it's weird. <laughs> but it's like he's, he's being face fed. down. He's like, "Dude, yeah. get my calves better." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, where are the grapes? Come on. <laughs> Somebody put this six-year-old in a two-piece. Anyway, get my shoulders, would you? <laughs> the guy was. Discussed. It was a despicable man, but just I just want to. No, be, all right. Just all right. I don't. You know, Mike's defending a look. A I think terrible, the guy. I think the guy's yeah. hot. When was, a, oh. No, I I do think though, like when you hear things about that happen, the like Corey Feldman, Corey Haim, rest his soul. All of these. There's a reason why, like Amanda Bynes now has like blonde hair and her eyelashes look like she's got two fucking black squirrels on top. It's, it's really fucked up. Like what happens to these kids because they're in this moment of stardom. They're young. They're being groomed and told what to do. And then all of a sudden reality hits when they're an adult and it's really fucked up. Man. Also, you're forcing all those kids to grow up really fast and be, have like adult, like, you know, people are wanting their autograph. It's like stuff that like their brains can't even, they're not even ready to, to comprehend yet. That's actually, that's actually a great point because there's a reason why when people are like, I realized somebody molested me and I didn't realize till I was 40. And the reason why, no, seriously, is because you store it, that yeah. what they say is you store it, then you go to a therapist and a the therapist is like, why do you feel it? And all of a sudden you go, oh my God, dude, you walking. have the realization. So if you're a little kid, and people are like, you're walking on a red carpet going into an award show as a little kid and everyone's screaming. You, you can't fathom what's really going mm -hmm. on. That's a great point. Yeah. Um, you know, what I was going to say, though, about the, the thing about we were talking about, like, fathers. Um, was uh, Speaking of fathers, Paul Sorvino was going to kill, like, kill Harvey Weinstein. Because Har Mira Sorvino, 
the, mm. the act like when like found he found out yeah he paul surveyed oh this is it, 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 we're at 40 minutes already this is a good one oh this is a really good one uh but um the father shit man is big and and one of the craziest things i ever heard you remember daryl strawberry right so mm -hmm. daryl strawberry and doc gooden uh you know they got busted for coke on the mets like six times yeah. and I, everyone's going i had daryl strawberry cars oh dude yeah. dude I, even though i'm a yankee fan like when you were little back when the mets were winning you got like a daryl strawberry or a yeah. dwight gooden card that's insane you yeah. know and and the mets were like at the top of everything in 86 and everyone's like this fucking bum six times with coke get him out of the fucking league right and he was on mike francesa he was talking on the fan back in the day dude he said something and when he said it i go i'm never judging anybody again he said it's 1986 the mets are in the world series against the red sox and he said it's game two and this was when the mets were fucking rock stars said like walked into restaurants at night and it was like it was dude it was like rock star shit and they were all doing like blow mm -hmm. so they were like they were like it, the mets were like the beatles of like, yeah. or like or like you know they were just like they would walk into a place party women all the shit daryl strawberry says game two world series he goes he hits a home run and he said he's rounding first base Dude, this fucks me up. He's rounding first base, and he sees Shea Stadium, Shea Stadium at the time, and everyone's going nuts, and he said he stepped on second base, and he said he felt this big because all he thought about when he rounded second was his father saying, you're a worthless piece of shit that's never going to be anything. He said the moment of his, of one of his career, because he, he said was just taken because he remembered his dad, his dad saying, you're a piece of shit, you'll never be anything, and he goes, all these people are cheering for me and don't know how I feel. And then I'm like, oh, then you go do coke. So now, and after I heard that, I'm like, you know something, man, until somebody's like kind of ready, you know, Matthew Perry said that. He's like, dude, look, he's like, you could tell me all these things, but until I'm like, I think somebody needs to hit for them. It happened, listen, it happened to me like anxiety, depression wise, or when I was really like, I wanted to, I got out of the dark room and I said, look, I want fucking doctors. I want mm -hmm. help. I, people that love me, just come on, let's, let's, I want it. I think that that's what needs to, to happen. So like for your father to be like, you're a piece of shit. And then for you to go and be successful is, is it's like a fucking nutty thing. A lot of athletes, a lot of athletes. Is that right? That story. Yeah. Le I guess LeBron's dad. Not being there. Yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah. You know what I mean? That, that forms a certain type of person. It's like an I'll show you mentality. Yeah. Yes. It's or like, the opposite. You hear a lot about people, uh, you know, they, 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 they blame, like, not having it. They're like, yeah, my, my life didn't turn out because I didn't have support, you know? Yeah. Two sides of the, the tracks, folks. <laughs> yeah. This, no, it's true. It's, it's really like uh, I couldn't imagine. Like, my dad wasn't that. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, my dad, my parents got divorced when I was five. But like my, when I, when my dad found out I started doing comedy, he's like, man, you know, if anybody could pull that off, it's you. You're funny. You're this. Like my dad was like, yeah, right. You piece of shit. Right. Like you're not funny. No one's going to, I like, that would be like, I, I don't understand how, uh, there are comedians that are like, yeah, my parents just never supported it. So I was on my, like that. Like my parents were like, yeah, dude, go and do it. I think mm -hmm. you could do it. My mom would whisper it to me that she was proud of me. My dad would be like. My dad had no support. Oh, I thought, he your mom, I thought he said his mom whispered that you're never going to make it. Like, no, my oh, yeah. mom was whispering because dude, my dad was so like, you're not the bomb right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not funny, Michael. Good night. Hey, Mike, you're about to eat a dick. Have a good set. All the jokes you tell about me are lies. You know that, right? Your improv stinks, Mike. <laughs> You, you have the worst tags in the business. <laughs> what? Are you, wow. are you You're film a fucking a... act. Cosby said that 10 years ago. How do you, you know this lingo, Mom? <laughs> You're going to film a special because you're yeah, special? she knows all of the words. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're going to run the line and then never get booked at this club again. <laughs> you're There's never going to have a tight you set. <laughs> <laughs> you're never going to be late night ready. <laughs> <laughs> that one, that one stung. You can't cut out the fat. You don't know how to construct a joke properly. Good night, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you need to have a beginning, middle, and an end. <laughs> Each bit, no matter how long they Mike, are. your last joke needs to be the strongest. That's why they call it a closer. Hey, Mike. All premise, no punch. 
<laughs> Funniest Mike. joke I ever saw you do, Mike, was put headliner on a show that you were headlining. Hey, Mike, where's the joke? <laughs> <laughs> Just all shit that eat, like the last yeah. thing you ever want to hear. Mike, weak yeah. premise. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my dad was actually opposite, though. Like, my dad was like, like, he was more like, yeah, fuck everybody else. You could do it better than, like, he was like almost arrogant. But I will say, I was thinking about this on the way here. My dad... I'm crying on the way here. And uh, no, my dad took us to uh, Radio City Music Hall to see Rodney Dangerfield when I was fucking, I was a kid, man. I don't know how they let me in. And by the end of it, I was sleeping in the, in the balcony with my dad oh. and brother. And, uh, and he took me to see Eddie Murphy Raw when I was young. So it's like, yeah, like, so as much as, yeah, you know, they, things could have been better. You know, with their, them, but he, I kind of, that kind of got me something. Couple pivotal moments. Dude. Pivotal moments. That's Some, it. Sometimes the moments, like, I, like, as a dad and as a comic, I think we have to make our time really count with our kids. Like when, you know, because we travel so much and stuff like that. Yep. And I'm all about the quality and the impact of the quality over like the quantity of there's dads who are around all the time, but they're on their phone the whole time with their kids. Yeah. Their kids are going to remember that more than, you know what I mean? Doing shit. Yeah. Doing something that's like yeah. memorable and valuable. Dude, you just made me feel like when the other night when I was, I was like, was I on my phone too much? No, but I really agree with that. Like, I'll take my kids. I'll go, hey, let's go to the arcade. Let's go to the movies. Let's go hit golf balls. Let's yeah. like do shit. Uh, because, yeah, they're, they're, that is true. There's like a nine to five dad who just is like, it's like he comes home, they eat. Like, it's not like a comic. As much as people like, dude, comic, how do you deal with kids? It's like, I'm with them all day. Mm -hmm. I take my kids to like pick my kids up from school. Yeah. You know, and you'll do the same. You'll do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have, you have a three year old and an, and he's not a newborn new boy, both he's, boys. Yeah. Two boys. Okay. So, and yeah. what, what's the young, how old's the youngest? Uh, he's going to be one in June. Holy shit. Dude. Yeah, yeah. You got it going on at home. Yeah. 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 And, and the thick and, and you got no, like she's, she just works. At, she does. What does she work? Uh, my wife works remotely from home. Okay. Now, good. And nice. you guys have help or no? No, not. I mean, well, we we take my older son to daycare because we just we both. Oh no, no, work. no, of course, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I, I'm talking like, I, and I'm not. I, I got I gotta tread lightly with what I'm about to say here. It's almost like when the kid is fashionable. Yeah. Like, oh no, we'll have a we'll have a baby and then we'll just. Yeah. And you're like, but it's convenient. Yeah, it's like a baby's a purse. Yeah. Yeah. The oh. best accessory. <laughs> Dude, I had so many great looks at the mall holding him. Do you know and then how many likes I got on Instagram after I posted? Oh. Then I handed them off to the nanny and we went out. But yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> this is my baby. Uh, their name is Content. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just TikTok, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, then yeah. you hand them off. You're like, my videos are done for the day. Yeah. Take care of it. Take him away. <laughs> Mike, you'll be there. We'll Unless see, you gotta... buddy. We can't afford a new apartment. To, we were looking for apartments to, to like grow a family eventually can't afford anything it's so crazy right now it's in crazy dude. it's actually it's, nuts you can't even get a two-bedroom mic but i can't get it i can't get a, <laughs> i can't get a place with a wash with a with a washing machine for under thirty five hundred dollars a month are you gonna it's pay perfect. for that room with guest spots mike uh -huh. <laughs> does your landlord accept chicken wings mike <laughs> <laughs> she knows how to get guest spots don't pay Michael don't pay oh that's so great I heard they had less than 10 people in the audience which didn't meet the threshold for payment to the comedians Mike <laughs> that one actually hurt a little bit uh, now he's just saying shit yeah. that he, that, like, he, that, he hates it. that I heard last night yeah. <laughs> it'd be funny if like now that you're an adult she still calls and whispers yeah. hey how's everything you guys getting ready to get married you'll never do it good night Mike how's, how's everything just kidding I know <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> oh shit, man. Um, I'm going to I'm going to Florida tomorrow. I'm doing. You ever do the Naples Club? Uh, off the hook. Yeah. Uh, did a live podcast there once. Yeah. Oh, was, was it fun. good? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. I've heard really good things about. Yeah, like, I heard like it's stuff. starting to come around. I think mm -hmm. there was like an issue. Not not an issue. I heard that it was like back in the day, people were like, oh, that room could be tough, and now everyone's like, I've heard really good. Now things, it looks yeah. like yeah, I'm I'm doing that, and we're going. Um, Doing a little vacation too. Oh, nice. We just came back from um, we just came back from Jamaica. Oh, wow. Have you been? No, no. One thing I know with the kids. One thing you guys should do is get a get the parents to come down from the Bay Area and just get like three nights mm -hmm. at like an all inclusive mm -hmm. somewhere and just fucking chill, dude. That you. That sounds dope. No, she'll yeah. She, Went to Hawaii once for a gig and I brought my wife for that and that was the closest of you know oh. island life. Yeah. So she must have. We had so much fun. Yeah, where'd yeah. you perform? Uh, at um, 
at this place in uh, Honolulu, uh, nice. the Blue Note. Nice. In Honolulu. Was it cool? Yeah. It was great. Yeah? Yeah. It was cool. And like, I'm uh, like I'm a sax guy, and Kenny G had just done uh, a show there recently. I'm like, this is so cool. I'm doing the same venue as Kenny G. Wait, do you play the sax or not? Mm-hmm. You do? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. You ever do it on stage? Uh, not for comedy purposes, but I did it for years with like the comedy jam with, with Josh Adam Myers and stuff like that. And yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, that would be did sick. Did it with Kill Tony for years. So yeah, I've used it like comedy adjacently like with stuff. That yeah. would be sick if you ever did a special and then you just, when it was done, you came back out for an encore and you just fucking Kenny just G'd ripped. it up and then just threw it at somebody and left. That would be like, you just ripped the sacks. Or maybe that's the opening to a special. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Akash Singh just had dancers come out. Look kind of cool. Yeah, dude, right? that looked great. That looked cool, right? Yeah, it was dope. Him pulling a, a stool out of the back wall, though, that was pretty sick at the end. And set and did the and finished the show off. The whole no. set, the background was stools stuck on the wall. Oh, okay. And then he went and yanked one off as like the stool at the end. It was it was just a really cool set set design. I'm gonna pull out guns. Imagine everyone just trying to top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what did he do? Yeah. I pull out guns and. I'm, you throw gasoline on it, burn the place down. I do. You've seen Psy come out of the the stage in Korea, right? Have you seen him do that? The the oh, the open oh, Gangnam Style. Oh, have you, dude, have when you seen he jumps it? up and the place goes ape shit. I would love to enter a special but, that way. But wasn't it funny how it went a little too high? Oh, like, dude. his legs were oh, kicking. Dude. Did you see He's that? He's doing the cartoon thing, running I think on Kevin air. Kevin Hart's done that, yeah. unfortunately. Has he? He shot up. No, but no. Fire on no, him. He's, he's, he's risen. No, he oh. he rose dude, up. He hasn't been catapulted like that. Dude, this guy is really looked like a cartoon it looked like he was what? running in the air for like three seconds and as soon they, he didn't even touch the ground and the i mean i'm talking like it looked like five football fields <sighs> of people just going ape shit yep. like and it, and he's got like one song yeah <laughs> does he leave after that like, i don't know he's got to have other ones i guess <laughs> but that's what they're, they're this is what they're there for for sure you know what i was gonna do i probably shouldn't say this because i could do it but I, i'm probably gonna i'm never gonna do it we were talking about um i'll do it i'll, I'll say it we were so we shot uh the special in the at the den mm-hmm. the new one right it come out in a couple months and, and so we're so happy with it and the next day um have you worked with uh jason or james do you, the guys that shoot the specials, they did uh, Norman's and Sam's and uh, no. Uh-uh. Okay, so, so James Webb and Jason Katz, they they shot my special. You know who they are. Right? My, my, oh, I know James. I know James. Yeah. yeah. So Chicago guy, great yeah, guy. Chicago guy, great guy. So they were like, all right, we shot, we got both in the can. It was an amazing night. Crowds were insane, and we're good to go. And like, all right, tomorrow, come in at noon before you guys fly out, and we'll shoot the sketch that leads up to the special. Mm-hmm. And then my opener, shout out to Tyler Horvath. He goes, I love Tyler. I've worked uh, with him a bunch over the years. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so he's Tyler, great. Tyler opens me. He's great. Dude, he's and awesome. He, and he's great, and he's smart, and he's only getting better. Mm-hmm. And um, I love working with Tyler. And Tyler was like, Paul, you know what, man? Everything went so perfect. He's like, just maybe we don't eat because we, we didn't have a set thing to do. We had a couple of ideas. We were going to like have the sneakers come out. We were going to do a couple different things. And it was just like, you know what, man, when I walked out with the B roll behind, like behind me and the place went ape shit and then it was like, maybe just, just start. Right. So we kind of stop it. But then we start talking about what I could have done. And I was like, you know, what would have been funny. I'm in a dark room. Right. And I'm just sitting there and like, I'm kind of like a little shaky and nervous and the lights are dim. And I just grab a revolver and I'm crying. I start crying and I just either put it in my mouth or I put it to my head. And then all of a sudden they go, they're ready. And I go, oh yeah, no, cool. It's fine. I just put it down and then I, and then I go out, have a great time, <laughs> like just kill. kill. It's fine. But like it starts like, remember the beginning of Lethal Weapon? Yeah. Remember where he just is like, he's like looking at his wife who died and he just goes like this. <laughs> so, the, so the Jason Katz goes, what if you did two guns? <laughs> like you just go like this. And, he's doing that. and I'm crying and I'm weeping and they go, it looks great out there, Paul. They're ready for you. I'm like, all right, yeah, oh. dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> right back this, in. This is going to be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> Everyone just tried. But that thing with Akash, that is kind of cool. But uh, listen, fire is a little, I love Kevin Hart. I mean, we are comics. Fire is a little, unless it's for like the joke, but like real fire. Like, well, he kept calling it out. Yeah, he kept going like flame. Put like, some fire on them bitches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then they put fire up. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. Had a pyro. So he's making fun of himself because it was serious in the it intro. Was, yeah, it was, and then he kept it's using so it. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, so it's, yeah. That's and then he did. And then he, he was self aware enough to be like, "This is ridiculous." That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, then, like, if somebody was like, flames, like, because the yeah. joke killed. Right. And just <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, dude, we got we to gotta wrap this up in a second. Where are we at, Mike? An hour? This was fun. 
just coming up on an hour. Um, so where are you going to be, man? Plug your shit, or if there's anything else you got, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. New crowd work, uh, not another crowd work special dropping on uh, on April first on Monday. Where, that's on your YouTube that's channel. That's on my YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Watkins. and then uh, you can follow uh, Stand Up on the Spot at youtubecom slash at standuboots, and then um, I got a podcast called Trailer Tales with Chelsea Lynn and Libby Higgins. I'm actually sporting a, a Libby Higgins shirt right now. Oh, dude, you did something that was really fucking funny. Oh my god, I got to talk about this. I got to talk about this and I got to give you credit for this right now. That sketch you just did about your son being hurt for football and you had a wig on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Southern dads. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, oh, thanks. Man. Dude, did you, we got to, I don't know if there's a way that I got to tell Andrew to maybe put, put the, play the link or put the link up. Dude, that was so great. <laughs> oh, where, you. Where, where, Cause he's, you're in the hospital room, right? I'm in the and hospital he's in the room. bed. Right. And you're a Southern dad where like football is everything. Uh -huh. You have a mullet wig uh -huh. and the doctor tells you that he's, he's going to be fine. He just can't play football. Right. And then you said he's dead. I said he's dead. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, he's fine. He's just, and you go, no, he's dead. And I'm like, and, no, he's dead. <laughs> and then you finally get the doctor to go, all right, I'm sorry, your son's dead. I'm so sorry. You go, thank you. Yeah. And it pans over to the, the kid with like a cast. Yeah, the kid's the... just wrist was hurt. And yeah, he was yeah. just like, oh, dude. So I love shit like that. Oh, thanks, now, man. Now, what, what is that on? Like, was that a, a sketch show you did? or? Uh, so, yeah, I, 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 uh, I do a bunch of different sketches online. And that was with a, a, a sketch group called uh, American High. And they've got a cool thing where uh, I went out to Syracuse and we shot a ton of sketches that were high school and college uh, uh, they've got this set. They bought this school and turned it into a different like set piece for di like. There's a hospital. There's like a full on high school. Where is this in Syracuse? In Syracuse, yeah. That anybody can like. like no, it's this, like this, it's this. like their sketch group that they like. Yeah, and they just. Oh shit! That yeah. sounds amazing. It's, it was dope. Yeah, yeah. So like, I've had a bunch of different. There, uh, a, a couple of them that we put out. I did. Uh, if um. If uh, Tom DeLong from Blink-182 was uh, a biology professor, oh and that one went pretty viral. They got like 5 million views or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Done some fun ones. Yeah, yeah dude. What You know, the, what I love about you is you're, you're so, the thing about you is you're so silly. And like, and that is like, as much as I, I love all types of comedy. But like you just have that silly thing. You know, when I'm in L.A., dude, we should get because there's a bunch of people that can do it. But we should do a sketch out in L.A. together. Dude, I would dude, love dude, that. We, we should do a sketch. I would. Dude, and, and we have such and stand up on the spot yes, when you're in L.A. Dude. And like we have such different looks that together it can be really. Oh, yeah. Dude, it could be fun. I'm just thinking of like you like not having enough money to pay. And then like we figure out a way you can. Dude, there's like a lot of different things that we can do. But like I love, dude, silly shit like that. Like. Because growing up, dude, for me, it was Zucker Brothers. It was it was Airplane. It was Naked Gun. Dude, dude they're making another Naked Gun with, what's his name? Is it Liam Neeson? I think he'll actually be great. I think he'll be great. Uh, they were going to do it with the guy from The Office. What was it? Was Steve Carell? No. Uh, Krasinski? No. The guy who, who, he was in The Hangover. Oh, Ed, Ed, uh, Ed, Helms? Ed Helms. Ed Helms was going to do it. I think. I heard Ed Helms. Then they did flirt with the, the notion of. I think of, Liam of Neeson is going to kill it. Dude, that would. I mean, I think he he when he I've seen him do some comedic stuff and he is very good as a straight man and like very like yeah. if he here's the thing if Liam Neeson gets that right it's going to be incredible it's gonna be huge because and it, wait it, is it like Mike can you just find out is it going to be Frank Drebin is going to be the I'm looking at it right now uh, Liam Neeson will star as Devin, yeah. Have you oh. ever seen a grown man naked? Oh. <laughs> Dude, Liam Neeson airplane, is Frank. You know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Have you ever do a Turkish prison? Of course he hasn't, which yeah. is the funniest yeah. thing. He goes, he goes, Billy, he goes, you like movies about gladiators? <laughs> uh, he, I know you, you're Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah, yeah. He goes, no, I'm sorry, I'm Roger Murdoch. He goes, you may have me confused. He goes, my dad says, he goes, I think you're great. My dad says you don't try only until the playoffs. He goes, the hell I don't. Yeah, <laughs> he just yeah, grabbed yeah. Then they take him out in his pads. Yeah. Oh, dude, I love shit like that. And, and so good. Dude, that was, yeah, you got to watch well, that. Well, Nielsen, or, uh, he was, he's a, started off as a serious actor forever, and it was only when he was older that he started doing comedy. That's the thing. So I think that's why it's perfect for, like, a Liam Neeson. Yeah, because they're like, oh, he's the Taken guy. Yeah. And now yeah. he's going to be, like, goofy. Be it, could be, it could be great. Liam it's, Neeson, Leslie Nielsen. I mean, what are we doing here, guys? It's yeah, perfect. It's, it's weird. Is it, but it's not Zucker, brother, is it? Uh, it doesn't say... In this particular thing that I'm looking at, doesn't say no. Dan it, Gregor, Doug Mann, and Schaefer. Mm. You know, you know this. 
We did the, you know, the story with Bobby Kelly and went with David Zucker, right? I, you know that whole thing. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, David Zucker, we, I did the um, Impractical Jokers cruise, the mm-hmm. third one, mm-hmm. and David Zucker was on the on the ship, and I'm like talking to him. So the night before, we we go to Tampa because the ship is sailing out of Tampa. Yeah. We, me and Bobby have had this argument, but I, I'll tell you the story. So, um, me and Bobby smoke a cigar that night. We go out to, to eat with Mike Calta from the radio the next day. I mean, that night we smoke a cigar. Next morning, I'm in the lobby and everybody's kind of getting ready to, everyone's gathering in the lobby to go walk to the, the shuttles to take us to the ship. And, you know, Steve Byrne is there. I mean, there was a, so many comics there. Uh, Vecchione and Carmen Lynch and everything. And all of a sudden, I just see David Zucker just standing there and like he's alone and i'm like dude me and my brother like we grew like this is fucking airplane and naked gun dude and yeah. he's right there and i'm like he's either gonna be a dick or not but i'm gonna find out and i start having this great conversation with him great and he's like oh do you think we i could make like the movie now and we just start talking and i'm like oh. and all of a sudden the elevator opens and bobby kelly walks out and he looks at me but i'm in the middle of this thing and and but bobby's far and then bobby gets close and he just goes hey Verz, is he famous Okay, that's why you don't say hi, huh? That's why you don't say hi to me. He's famous. Okay, got it. And dude, David Zucker goes, is that a friend? What is that? And I go, no, dude, I was just, no, no, so we could hang out last night. And He's going that in? He's going at it. And I go, and I was just going to be like, dude, I was just talking. I was going to fucking tell you, you know, and then um, it's so funny. David Zucker didn't like him the rest of the trip. They were like in the ocean together in like the Bahamas. And like he like walked away from him or like he, Bobby's like, I could tell he didn't like me. And I'm like, yeah, he's, horrible first impression. And he's just like, he's <laughs> just like, nah, Verzi, you, you fucking had to see someone famous. So you ignore your friend. And I was like, no, it was, I was just talking to I him. I didn't have time to introduce the, you. Yeah, yeah. Like you walked out and that was the thing. And then David Zucker after that, when I saw him on the show. It was just kind of like a, and I was just like, yeah. So there, and Bobby, Bobby will tell a different story. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing the bonfire tonight. I'm gonna have to ask him about the David Zucker interaction, yeah. get yeah. his side of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, what I just told you is the, is the side, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. But he'll, he'll be like, nah, Verdi could have said hi. He was Hollywood and me. But yes, that's <laughs> yeah. what, that's what. But it wouldn't be like if, if I'm sitting here talking to you, and all of a sudden, like somebody, I wouldn't be like, hold on, say, hey, what's going? And then go right. like, I was, I'm talking to you for yeah. a second. But um, now nah, me about. Me and Bobby have that, like, that's where Bone to Pick was born. Bone to Pick was born with sure. him going, like, we would do a podcast. But can I say, you fucked up? And, and we get into a screaming match. But he's uh, he's the best. He's so fucking funny. Uh, as are you. I want everybody to follow Jeremiah Watkins, dude. And, um, yeah, check out his crowd work special. Not another crowd work special on his YouTube channel. Check out his sketches. This dude works hard. He's a great dad. He's hilarious. Uh, plug any dates you got, too. Do you have anything? Yeah. Uh, I love how uncomfortable you were getting. Come- well, uh, yeah, when people say nice things, I don't know. I didn't know where to look, so I was like... Yeah, no, you, <laughs> did, did, you, did you, like, you, you almost looked like the stepbrothers picture. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah with, the, with the sweater. You're just yeah, like, yeah. a great guy, I, I, and I'm funny. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you so much. You're like, where's Mike's mom to whisper this down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Cleveland, Kansas City... Um, uh, coming up uh, at a bunch of different spots. Uh, coming up, tour dates at JeremiahWatkins.com. West Bend, Wisconsin. Um, yeah, uh, those are the ones that I can remember off the top of my head right now. Is that what? Uh, Jeremiah Watts, uh, Jeremiah Watkins. Watkins. Com. Com. And every second Tuesday of the month is Stand Up on the Spot. We do tapings live at the Comedy Store every second Tuesday of the month. Nice, nice. And uh, guys, for my shows coming up uh, this weekend, I will be Friday and Saturday at Off the Hook Comedy Club for the first time ever in Naples, Florida. I've performed all over Florida, never in Naples, and never at this club. So if you didn't get tickets, you want to come and see me, check that out. Um, and then I will be uh, May 10th at the Troubadour in Hollywood for the Netflix is a joke comedy festival. Uh, then on the 11th, the next day, we are doing a live bone to pick, Mikey. Uh, me, Bobby Kelly, obviously, Mikey B will be in the building. That is May 11th at the big uh, Red Clay, I'm sorry, the Red Clay Comedy Festival at the Earl at 8 p.m. on May 11th. Uh, my makeup date for the Gramercy Theater in New York City is June the 8th. Get tickets. Tickets are going. We're going to sell that puppy out. More dates are coming. PaulVersey.com. Check out the Netflix special, Nocturnal Emissions, on Netflix right now. And uh, please like and subscribe to the Verzi Effect. Hit the subscribe button. Leave reviews. And uh, it makes the show go up. Thank you guys so much. I will be back next week uh, with another episode. Thank my guest who crushed it. As always, check them out and we will see you next week.